It's Derry who play from left to right in the first half. That means there's a gentle breeze supporting me in the first half. Picked up here by Colm Rafferty. Centre half back, well blocked down. And Brian Stafford. Gary Coleman opting it forward. Bob O'Malley coming out for it. And Dermot Heaney progressing. Looking for the first scoring chance. And he's put it over the bar. A point by the midfielder who advanced into a good position. He's formed a very useful alliance this season with Brian McGilligan. So Pat Spillane, a very good start then for the Derry men. Excellent start for Der uh, Derry, especially playing against the wind. I noticed Meath have already made a positional switch and have started Colin O'Rourke on the 40 with Terry O'Connor in corner forward. That's interesting. Right down there by Eugene Heaney to the waiting arms of Colin Coyle of Meath. On towards Liam Hayes, just round the wrong side for him. Danny Quinn coming out. Ooh, a high challenge by Colin O'Rourke there on Henry Downey, the Meath captain. Or the Derry captain, I should say. Bobby O'Malley. The Meath fans getting behind their team as Anthony Tavill is indicted there. Henry Downey out of the ball first time ahead of Colin Coyle. Into open space. An important catch, this one. Fergal McCusker in towards Ender Gormley. Opportunity here for Derry to tag on another point. And they don't miss chances like that. Interesting movement, an important catch by Fergal McCusker, and Ender Gormley did the rest. Three points to nil. So 12 minutes gone. Interesting probing ball through the centre. The goalkeeper not sure whether he should come and take it or not. Linking up now with Tony Scully and outside to Gary Coleman. Can't hold it cleanly there against Brendan Riley. Danny Quinn. Been bursting from the fullback position, a link with the last Derry side to win the Ulster Championship back in 1987. And then they met me, of course, in the semi final that year. Ender Gormley was on that team. Anthony Toho into open space towards Joe Brawley, a player they rate very highly up around the Oakleaf County. Going by Robbie O'Malley, not easy to do that. He kicks it over the bar. It's a splendid point indeed by Joe Brawley. Straight out of defence that one came, an excellent point Pat. Excellent score, the best score of the game so far, very good individual effort by Joe Brawley. Excellent run, we wonder about the number of steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, yes. Very nice, thank you ref. <laughs> it's a very fair point as you make Pat, at least nine steps taken that time, but referees have a habit I think when defenders are in closing down attackers that they tend to let that particular rule slip by. Yes, the benefit of the doubt is usually given to the attacker in that instance. All right, Brendan Riley up towards Liam Hayes. Me needing a score urgently to get back into this Royal Irish semi-final. Stafford back to Brendan Riley. Good shoulder. Came in there from Dermot Heaney. Back to Stafford again. Colm O'Rourke now. Can he be the one to inspire them yet? High up into the air. Is it on its way? It is. It's taken 14 minutes to produce. But Colm O'Rourke can always be depended upon to score a spectacular point. Ender McManus lets it slip by, on by Eugene Heaney. Chase for possession here. Anthony Tohill reacting quickly. Ender Gormley wanted it a short ball, instead it's pumped inside. And that's left behind by Graham Geraghty to Ender Gormley. And it sails over the bar. A third point for Ender Gormley, who started to roam away from the left corner forward position. He's taking up some very useful angles, and that's a good kick. So it's 6-1, and just 16 minutes gone in the first half. Now Colin Coyle, a chance to steady and set something up here. Going by Brian McGilligan. Henry Downey trying to come back, goal side, trying to get in a challenge. The referee says, play away. Bernard Flynn. This time the push, push by McKeever, just outside the 20-meter line, and it's going to give me another scoring chance. Looking for his first point of the match, and that's comfortably over. So a second Meath point. had a goal in the match so far and you often expect a goal from that great Meath full forward line a goal now will put them right back into this game trailing by four points at the moment they won the free kick a point here would put just a goal between the teams despite the earlier superiority of Derry it's curled delightfully in Trafford's second point both of them coming from freeze
Anthony Toho lets it spill down from his chest to Colm Coyle. When in trouble, Meath have called on the big guns to try and take themselves out of trouble. McGilligan, Terry Ferguson can't hold it. Brawley is in quickly. Chance of a score here for Derry. They close him down. It's Brawley accelerating and kicking. A second point for Joe Brawley. Brawley from Dungiven. I'm very disappointed with the game so far. It's very untidy. There's no pattern has developed in the game. Uh, while Derry are completely on top, yet there are still only four points in the lead, which is not a great lead considering the dominance they've held. Meath are playing with absolutely no purpose up front. They're playing it very tight. Listed on by Brendan Riley. Only as far as Gary McGill. Held by Ender McManus, but play continuing. Now Fergal McCusker against Big Lines. Right in the corner. Down to the cross, invitingly towards Anthony, towards uh, Dermot Heaney. Heaney cracking it high and over the bar. The midfielder's second point, and that was an excellent score, held up brilliantly out in the corner and picked out splendidly by McCusker for Heaney to pop it over. Ten points to three. Now, Bernard Flynn, who hasn't scored so far. Front around Kieran McKeever. Played outside to Colm O'Rourke. Started the second half at full forward. Now, Liam Hayes pumping it high in the air. Tommy Dowd in there seeking possession. But Derry grouping well. And that's going to be Gary Coleman who'll take it out. Towards Gary McGill, sold him a popper over the pass was far too short. Brendan Riley inside to Stafford, seeking support from Coyle. Referee whistles quickly and it results in play being fractured. Meath will have the free kick. So Stafford on a tricky angle. Curled in, that's back there, Brian McGilligan. And the referee decides it is going to be a 13-metre free. It was Heaney, in fact, who was taking it out. Clearly fouling the ball, and it's going to be a free in. Stafford can make the most of it. A simple tap over for Brian Stafford. Three points is his tally. fed forward for Liam Hayes to come on to. Showed far too much of that one to Dermot Heaney. On to Anthony Tohill, Derry in full flight. Again, the early ball forward to cause some problems. Fergal McCusker taking up a good position, top of the left. McLean's having to come out of position from full back to try and hold up his progress. A support here from Ender Gormley. Bobby O'Malley trying to put in a challenge. And the boot went in, unfairly so, and it's going to be a free kick for Derry. And that's 40 free kicks now the referee is awarded in just a little over 40 minutes of action, 42 minutes of play. The greater concentration of players now down in front of the Meath goal as Anthony Tohill winds himself up from this sharp-angled free. He's caught it beautifully. It couldn't have been better. Tohill's second-pointed free. And that was such a tricky angle. Great score indeed for Derry. Well, they might cheer. Bernard Flynn. Pushed by Gary, Gary McGill. Dropped inside. Colm O'Rourke. John McElean, the substitute. Going by Brian McGilligan as well, but swallowed up by a whole phalanx of Derry defenders. One of them, one of them Tony Scullion. Now Robbie O'Malley pleading his case against Ender Gormley. Wins the free kick. Up to Tommy Dowd. Pushed and shoved. And that's been the nature of this match. Gary Coleman, the latest. Meade certainly missing the inspiration of David Beggy and PJ Gillick this afternoon. Tommy Dowd here. He kicks it over. It's a good point by Tommy Dowd. His first score in the match. Colin Coyle. Brendan Riley fed on to Tommy Dowd. He got the last goal for Meath. Can he now pop over another point? The answer is yes. Two in succession now for Tommy Dowd. And the margin closes down to a mere five points. Just about midway through the second half. Belted into the clear. First time on by Ender Gormley towards Fergal McCusker. Gary McGill has gone racing forward. It's three against two. 
the numbers favouring me at the moment with the ball in Derry hands and the goalkeeper makes a super save Donald Smith from Gary McGill that's a splendid save the best piece of goalkeeping in the match to date and yet another substitution being considered this is Jerry Martin being prepared McLions can't hold it into Gormley can it's Gormley bearing down and goal goal shot blocked down by Smith again and Tohel toe pokes it outside and wide a splendid save again by Donald Smith an excellent save Joe, Joe. I think poor Mickey McQuillan and the subs I think they'll be sweating a little bit now I think Smith is certainly the number one contender at the moment time rapidly running out now just about two minutes remaining as it comes in again to the danger zone Colm O'Rourke trying to hold it up in there against Brian McGilligan fisting it across towards Tommy Down punched out somehow punched back in and the end it's Dermot Heaney the other midfielder the two midfielders living in and around their own full back line at the moment for Derry surrendering possession at midfield to Meath Ender McManus his side trailing kicks it over the bar Actually, so Joe, of all the youngsters, McManus has been the, by far the most impressive of the youngsters by me today. Unfortunately, they don't seem to have a whole pile of reserve talent there. Either two things I'll tell you about today with me is that one, they're either slipping, or two, they don't give a damn about this league. And I have a sneaky feeling that they're not interested in this league. I don't think they want to perhaps to play against Dublin in a couple of weeks' time if Dublin qualify. There is another consideration, of course. The form of training that they may be doing just at the moment uh, may not be conducive to performing a good performance here in Croke Park at this particular time in the season. I would think so, yes. I think if there were horses, there might have been stewards in quarry after this. Because <laughs> there's, a, there's a few of them not raising a gallop. <laughs> Gollum O'Rourke belting it forward. Held up here by Brendan Riley, trying to go by John McAleen. And in the end, it's going to be a free kick. Or is it? It's goal. It's a goal. The referee allowed an advantage. <laughs> well, Brendan Riley has got the goal with just about half a minute remaining. I wonder, did I speak too soon, Joe? <laughs> well, they're back. This is the goal again. And against the persistence of some dogged defending, he kept on going back. It was a great goal by Brendan Riley. Great presence of mind there to continue and play. Very poor defensive work. There. No cover at all for the goalie. The goalie left isolated. Here's Joe Brawley using up a couple of valuable seconds, belting it in now. Fergal McCusker in there, so too Eugene Heaney. Fisted outside here towards Connor Ferguson. On it goes to Liam Hayes, the Meath crowd urging an early ball inside. A late goal perhaps to dramatically take this side into the league final. Connor Ferguson taken down and this will have to be it. Ferguson can take the free himself. Inside to Colm O'Rourke, they need a goal. O'Rourke, oh he's put it over the bar and there's the bare minimum in it. Who would have believed it a long way back? Well there were six points between the teams. But Meath do not give up. This is the shot from Colm O'Rourke. Derry are celebrating, this is the final kick. It's all over. Derry have done it by just a point. One felt they might have won it by perhaps four or five. But Meath do not give up. The final score reading Meath one goal and eight points. Derry 12 points. So Derry then safely through to the final in a fortnight's time in spite of that late scare. But who will they meet in the final? Would it be the who beat Kildare in last year's decider, bidding to reach the final for the fifth time in six years?